Dave. Old Trap. What's that, Noah? Do you know what time it is? Uh, it's about 6.10. That's right. That means it is time for the GSL Code A. It is Friday, Friday. You're going to watch Code A on Friday. And it's going to be an amazing day today. Welcome to Seoul, Korea, everybody. Indeed. I am Doa. Of course, with me, as always, this season is none other than Mole Trap. As you can see, I have actually gone Super Saiyan today because I'm so excited. Yeah, man. I'm powered up. He was sitting the there today. before the cast going <laughs> for about three episodes. That's right. And uh, now here he is, Super Saiyan mode. That's right. My eyes were like jiggling. Mole Trap was like, Will Doa go Super Saiyan before GSL starts? <laughs> and, it, and I did. Exactly. It worked. I got to say, right. you do the best impression of the oh. voice from Dragon Ball Z. Thank you. Very, very good. Thank you. Yes. So. Today we have an excellent, excellent day of Code A lined up. We have some really, really, really good matchups. And right. don't forget, we have MVP playing today. Yes. Yeah. The world wow. champion. The two-time GSL championship winner is here in the round of 32 of Code A, that's in right. jeopardy of possibly being knocked out of the GSL altogether. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a, a bit of a blow to go yeah. from um, from that to this. But let's take a look at the match results from Wednesday. That's right, we saw Lenok. Oh, no, Lenok. Why'd they have to remind me? Losing to Creator Prime. Good play by Creator, though. Yep, yep. We might see some on. good stuff out of him in the future. We also had uh, Ryung take down TSL Revival. Of course, Ryung playing for the team Slayers. We had MVP Avenge falling to the Emperor himself, Slayers Boxer. That was a bit of an exciting match. Wasn't yes. It? Yeah. I, I think that's... <laughs> wow, yeah. A bit of an exciting match. A little bit of an yeah, understatement. A little bit. So, and we also had TSL Alive taking down MVP Finale in uh, short order, a 2-0 victory. Now today, here's what we're going to see. It's going to be Startail Ace versus MVP Violet. Following that, we're going to have Startail again, only it's August this time, against Slayer's Yu-Gi-Oh! And then the best foe you versus Slayer's Min. And of course, Incredible Miracles MVP. What's he doing on this screen? Playing against MVP Lure. Yeah, and uh, Slayers having a really good day on Wednesday. Both yeah. of their players making it through to the round of 16. Slayers has two more players playing today. Uh, so we'll see how they do today. See if Slayers can get four players in the round of 16. That would be actually pretty big. Yeah, well, huge dominant force in the team league, of course, just before this season started. Now possibly a dominant force in Code A as well. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. And uh, before we go any further, huge thanks to our sponsors, LG, Intel, and of course, G-Skill. Without them, this, all this, all this you see would not be possible. Let's get into the game. All right, here we go. Our uh, first Star Tail player I believe we've seen in Kode this season. He's our red Protoss at the top of Zelnaga Fortress. He is... Star Tail Ace. Startail Ace. Winner of IEM, actually. Oh, well. yes. Yeah, can't forget that. There he is. Startail Jackets. You know, I, I comment a lot on the jackets, and I, <laughs> I think they're all cool, but I really think Startail has a, a cool jacket, too. I'm like, maybe I'll just, like, swipe torches on my way home. I'm going to go. Startail. Speaking of which, I don't know. our best witch is two Startail Torch. He's recovering from some yeah. nose surgery right now. That's right. Got his uh, nose broken by... Angel Girl Prime in the SC2 soccer match, and uh, right. he's recovering in the hospital, or might be home by now, actually, but either way, he recovering. Be. Maybe he's watching right now. If he is, hello, Torch. We hope your nose is straighter than the last time we saw him. Mm -hmm. And uh, here down at the bottom of the map, our Blue Zerk, uh, former Warcraft 3 pro, but he switched over to StarCraft 2. He is. MVP Violet. MVP Violet, that's right. As I mentioned, he was a Warcraft 3 pro, and interestingly enough, in the uh, Code A qualifiers, his first victim was none other than FXO Moonglade, oh. who was also a, a Warcraft 3 pro. So, yep. yeah, yeah, in Warcraft 3. I looked up his record. He played Orc, by the way. Oh, okay. uh, he actually was very, very good. I didn't follow the War 3 scene very much, but I looked it up. He basically beat almost everyone he ran into, other than Lin and Czech, who, inter interestingly enough, are now StarCraft 2 pros as well. It'd be kind of fun yeah, to see if, too, see if they met up together. Um, checks out, but yeah, Lin, oh, yeah. Lin's in Codest now. You know, a lot of people are saying too that the kind of 
stereotypical thing I guess you could say about a lot of the former Warcraft 3 players is that a lot of people say they have good micro, but their macro really isn't as uh, good as a former Brood War player per se. So, uh, and you know, we've seen some evidence of that, but I'm not totally convinced yet. So I'm kind of really curious to see how Violet's macro is going to be. I think that's what I'm going to be paying the closest attention to. Yeah. Looks like it is a Forge Fast Expand for Ace and a uh, Fast Zergling Speed for Violet. So yeah, we had a uh, openings. 15 pool, I believe. Yep. And has now gone up to some Zerglings getting... Uh, I got the gas first, so we had enough gas in the bank for Zergling Speed as soon as the spawning pool popped out. And he's going to send out some Zerglings. It's something that I, we're seeing a lot more these days against Protoss. It's pretty normal, actually, to get that first because Protoss, especially, this is a three-player map, and especially on few-player maps, it's really easy for the Protoss to find you and block your expansion. So that doesn't do you any good. You just end up getting down a pool because you can't get your hatchery down. So getting that pool down earlier anyway has become kind of normal. Oh, yeah. Well, on a map like that, going hatch first against Protoss is extremely dangerous. It's really dangerous on almost any map except for the really, really large ones. Yeah. Just because if they scout you fast enough, like you said, they can just cannon in your ramp and do a forge instead of a cybernetics core, and suddenly you have no uh, hatchery, and yeah. Protoss can just four gauge or do whatever they want to do. So, yeah. Now, um, Ace, it's interesting, he's actually gotten on very, very few probes. He's gotten that Nexus up, and both gas in his main. Uh, this is actually pretty normal for Ace, the way he plays a lot lately. He likes to go for a lot of early gas, and you can see that he's got barely any probes on minerals, getting a lot of early gas. Um, he's known for liking Phoenix play, but when we saw him play uh, in a little bit in IEM, I didn't watch all those games, but when we saw him play most recently against Rhett in um, the TSL, I believe. Wait, which one was that? He played against Rhett in some tournament. NASL, sorry. Oh. Um, he, he didn't actually go for Phoenixes and that kind of play. He just went lots and lots and lots of gateway units early on and then switched into tech later on. So very, very solid sort of stout army build up first and then going for tech later. So, But he's capable of kind of doing both. And he's got his core up. Oh, oh the probe, probe gets, gets in, in and the sees, the, sees evolution the evolution chamber. chamber. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of Zergs... Um get that evolution chamber a little bit earlier against Protoss now just because a lot of Protoss players go air after they do that forge fast expand. So if you have the evolution chamber up, yeah. get those spore crawlers going. It's a good move, especially yep. considering the fact that you know Ace is known for for somewhat for exactly. oh, Hold that thought, Zerg like Zerg in there. In. Getting trapped against the probes, a couple escapes, but a good enough amount of probes getting lost by Ace right now. Down to just four, he's going to lose all of his probes in expansion it looks like. The last probe, oh, he manages to just save two. Wow. Not exactly what you want to happen early on. Yeah, and uh, he has killed 12 of Ace's workers yeah. at this point, total. So That's that was big. A lot. That was actually really big right now. Uh, they're actually still even in Harvesters, almost. Zerg is a little bit ahead. Well, I got to say, I'm a little bit surprised that Ace left himself open like that. He had so many probes down at his natural so early, and he only had one cannon at that point to defend. No sentries oh, really around. Oh, is this Overlord going to come back? Yes. Yep, I think Overlord was heading robo. out to try and escape and comes back and might see the Robo. Yeah, those sentries just take oh! too long to kill it. There it is. Spots the Robo. So, Violet knows what he's going up against. Now, of course, Ace could always cancel the Robo, but most likely he's going to finish it. So uh, how does Violet respond? He takes another base. It's interesting. All right. Transferring some drones over. So here's the thing. I mean, right now, Ace is trying to chrono boost out as many harvesters as he possibly can. He's definitely down economically, or at least he was slowed down quite a bit by that. And that's really, those little advantages are kind of what Zerg players are using to win against Protoss right now. If you just try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a Protoss economically and army-wise, a lot of times they can just, you know, basically beat you. The late game Protoss army is a little bit stronger than the late game Zerg army right now. So in the early game right now the Zerg's job is to get in there and either kill very important units like sentries and things like that with burrowed roaches or find a way to get Zerglings in the base, kill off as many probes as you can, kind of get that big advantage you need to swing forward early or late in the game rather. Yeah, now this is really interesting. Violet actually, he is, wow, he, he actually with the Evo Chamber he went for melee weapon upgrades. Uh, instead of going for range weapon upgrades, and he's gotten, he just now got two more gas. He was running off one gas for three bases, just getting tons and tons of drones, up to 59 harvesters, so his minerals are basically fully saturated. 
uh, almost fully saturated. He's got a few on gas. And just going for Zergling upgrades as well. So it looks like he might be thinking about using mass amounts of Zerglings in this game since he's going to have a lot of minerals incoming. And four hatcheries just put down a macro hatch and the Zergling upgrades. I think the reason that we're seeing that too is because uh, a lot of Zerg players pre previously focused on those missile upgrades. But against something like Blink Stalkers, which we see nearly every PvZ, Speedlings are actually better if you don't have to yeah. worry about sentries because they'll very be getting good. the Stalkers quite a bit more than your Ojas will. And if you have a lot of income, such that oh. you... Oh, we might oh. catch these sentries! Oh! Are they going to die? One goes down, another... Oh, not Three the of the sentries go down. And is he going to get the last on the one? Back. No, right. force field is keeping that back. There it is wow. right now. Violet playing this perfectly. Taking that, that little advantage, that little bit. He got the probes early. He got those sentries right now. That's the stuff that's going to help him win this game. Yeah, he took out three sentries, yeah. forcing Ace to make three more in order to have that sentry count in his army. So it's going to make it a little bit longer before Ace can move out. He doesn't really have a large army right now. Looks like he's getting drops as well as overload speed right now, getting roach speed as well. So possibly planning on doing a bit of a roach drop. Otherwise, a lot of Zergs lately have been failing dropping on the Protoss mineral line too. Yeah, and that Overseer will go oh. down. I thought maybe he'd escape. Sacrificed its life to scout Thermal Lance and Colossus coming out though. So well worth it. Definitely worth it. Roaches with speed can actually do pretty well if they can catch the right opportunity, especially this map. The whole middle is way, way, way open. So uh, if he can catch the Colossus out of position, runs it's, it's easy to run some roaches up, especially with three less sentries. It's going to be yeah. harder for him to keep the roaches back. Absolutely. Look at the army coming out right now for AC. He does have a good amount of sentries yet. A couple stalkers, good amount of, well, two Colossi. So really, those Colossi aren't terribly well protected yet. That's not as many sentries as you would normally want to push out with. And not to mention, having to produce all those sentries has uh, kind of kept him from producing more gas units. But here uh -oh. comes Violet. It's going to be enough. A lot of force fields being used there. Speedlings getting around there. This does not look good for Startail Ace. Roach is wow. getting in there. And the Immortal doing some good damage. More Speedlings coming in right now. Is it going to be enough? The Roach is taking a lot of damage from the Colossi. And I think, oh, more reinforcements coming in for Violet. Streaming in Lings and Roaches from the bottom as well. He's rallied to the middle here. Looks Barely like he's going to try and regroup a little bit and go for another attack. And notice how Ace laid down a set of force fields and then fell back and didn't set down more. He didn't have the energy anymore. Nope. Again, just losing those th three sentries early, uh, really, really hurting him. Yeah, and the speedling upgrades again helping. He's getting melee level two right now. 149 to 91 supply, so significantly ahead right now is MVP Violet. And Ace trying to go after that third base, but Violet may counterattack. Looks like he is planning on doing a Baneling drop. Here they go, floating like deadly parade balloons. <laughs> Dropping not candy, Moltrap, but death. I really hope that they don't have balloons such as these in the Mace's parade because that would be bad. Uh, hey, Ace going in for okay. the third base, actually. He's actually in a really good position. He doesn't really need force fields as much because he's got a good position right now. Roach is coming in. If he can get those Stalkers in the way, he can use the Colossus to major effect, but he's oh, going to be dropping Banelings on top of the Stalkers, dropping out of the Overlords, doing not oh, as much alive. damage as they could have, but Ling streaming in as well as Roaches. Colossus still alive with uh, tons of kills amongst them are finally going to get taken out. There we go. And MVP GG Violet. coming from Ace. Wow. Wow! What do you know? There's Violet. Looks pretty happy about that first game. Now the man drop didn't go as well as it could have, but at that point he just had so many roaches. There you go. Game one goes to Violet. First time in GSL taking down a pretty formidable player, but yeah. you gotta keep in mind too, Ace hasn't really had a whole lot of GSL success yet himself. It's true. It's true. So, yeah. There's our Korean commentators. And here's us. So... <laughs> The, uh, yeah, so the Baneling drop, I think that was probably intended for the mineral line. That's what I'll, I've seen a lot of Zergs doing on the ladder I lately. imagine it was. Yeah. yeah. But Ace actually getting basically owned almost in that game, but it really yeah. came down to the th those things that we were talking about yeah, early I, on. He was yeah. really putting a lot of early pressure, and I think it's, uh, you know, Ace didn't do anything. He, he, he Forge expanded, and he kind of just sat back. So he couldn't do anything about the fact that Violet got a bajillion drones in bases. Yeah. For free, just, um, well, not for free, but he didn't have to 
really resist any pressure to get those bases. Mm -hmm. So that enabled him to have extra Zerglings to just run in and snipe stuff and force yeah. force fields and, uh, and kill probes. A lot of probes early as well. A lot of probes died. Whenever somebody says a lot of something died, I always think of that line in Return of the Jedi where Mon Mothma's like, many Bothans died to bring us this information. <laughs> I don't know why. I just uh, that's just what I that's just what I think. That'd of. be a good Zerg unit. How many people do you think we actually knew who Mon Mothma was? Let's get in the game. Forget that.